It's called the Hell Creek Formation. But to paleontologists, this part of North Dakota is pure heaven. All those dinosaurs that led happy, fruitful lives here on these ancient floodplains also died here. Making Hell Creek a hotbed for fossils. Leeson has walked just about every inch of this land. It's been in his family for decades, and he's been hunting fossils on it since he was practically a toddler. At 25, he has already headed 60 excavations, but even that couldn't have prepared him for what he was about to find protruding from that rocky hillside. I followed the, the bone fragments up the little gully, and I saw two spinal bones sticking out of the hill. Leeson rounded up his crew and began excavating the site. Removing more and more rocks and dirt, he realized there was a whole lot more to these fossils than just bones. I knocked off a little piece of what I thought was just sandstone, and I, I looked at it, and it had a weird pattern to it. And so I brought the piece of sandstone back to the lab, and after hours and hours of slowly brushing it, the scales started to appear. Leeson held in his hands the scaly skin of an animal that had been extinct for 65 million years. The skin hadn't collapsed in around the bone. And at that point, I knew that we had a 3D dinosaur mummy. I was absolutely thrilled. Our mummy, now dubbed Dakota after its home turf, is a fossil like other dinosaurs. But unlike reconstructed museum skeletons, What's extraordinary is that Dakota seems to have fossilized with most of its skin and organs intact. So that is the actual skin envelope here as well. Yeah, right. yeah. it comes up bumps. too, and then it's draped over the... It's the massively deep, the tail. Yeah. Much deeper than any tail I've ever... This animal had a big ass. <laughs> it's huge. That's a surprise. So surprising that compared to earlier estimates, the large skin envelope has ballooned our animal's rear end more than 25%. We've had 150, nearly 200 years of people looking at this particular animal, saying that's what it looks like. We've been wrong. As more and more specks of rock get carefully chipped away, Dakota gives us a more complete picture etched into its arms and tail, alternating bands of large and small scales provide telltale signs of how this animal may have really looked. Along the back runs one of the most exciting finds, a continuous frill from the pelvis to the tail, the first preserved in a hadrosaur mummy. 10 feet of it have been uncovered so far. These frills may have helped Dakota recognize its own kind. One of Dakota's arms has emerged from the tail block as well, and it's a real surprise. Much heftier and more muscular than expected, the arm may have been very strong, raising the possibility that Dakota may have run on four feet as well as on two. And now, the most intriguing hunk of Dakota. The body lies ready to reveal its secrets. The preparators have meticulously stripped three feet of rock from the body and are just now hitting skin. Somewhere in here, Tyler is convinced, is his real prize, a skull with its soft tissue intact. We're almost there. I can see the, the light at the end of the tunnel which is a good thing because it's been a long tunnel. <laughs> this single specimen has brought us closer than we've ever been to understanding where these animals lived, how they looked, how they moved, and how they survived into the afterlife.